of fascinating uh, artists um, from Israel and elsewhere. And uh, we thank again, Ronit Wasserman, who is going to be guiding us along the way as we have an experience. I have, uh, on a personal note, I've said this before, I just wanna say it again, you know, for a person who doesn't often get to art exhibits and doesn't get to experience the cultural and rich experiences of that which, it is, that's which, which art provides, this program has been such a, a welcome opportunity to bring the art to us here in our own homes uh, and experience all of that. So uh, again, we thank uh, the entire program and uh, Ronit, uh, thank you for being with us again and for introducing our speaker, our presenter. Absolutely, thank you so much, Rabbi Freundlich. It's great to be back at the Montreal community, even if it's just virtually. So thank you all so much for joining. I feel like you're all in for a really big treat this afternoon. Um, so I'm just gonna start out by giving a little introduction. So today, Israel's Ethiopian community is an integral part of the Israeli fabric and their rich culture and history can be found in every aspect of Israeli life, from politics to medicine, to fashion, music and art. Ethiopian Israelis are helping to shape and define what it means to be Israeli in the 21st century. I'm very excited that all of you are able to join this afternoon and meet Tikist. Um, and I just wanna say that it's just such a great experience that even if you are able to go to Israel and visit the Tel Aviv Museum, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would be able to hear directly from Tigist about her exhibition. So I think we really need to you know, recognize that. Um, so before Tigis begins her presentation, I just wanna give you some more background information about her. Um, she was born in Gondar, Ethiopia in 1977, and she immigrated to Israel in 1984 on Operation Moses with her parents and her siblings. As some of you might already know, this was a very difficult trek, physically and mentally through the deserts of Ethiopia and Sudan. Today, Tigis lives in Ranana with her husband and three children. In addition to being a fine artist, she is a professional graphic designer and illustrator and a graduate of the Visual Communications Department at the B'Tselel Academy of Arts and Design in Jerusalem. Um, Tigist has participated in exhibitions throughout Israel and abroad, including one in Addis Ababa. She is the recipient of the prestigious Chaim Schiff Prize for Figurative Realist Art. And as part of this highly esteemed award, she currently has an exhibition on view at the Tel Aviv Museum called The Paper is White on the Outside but black within. She mainly works with charcoal on paper and loves its simplicity and softness. Some reoccurring themes in her work include motherhood, femininity, and racism. The works in the show fall into three categories, portraits, scenes from everyday life depicting ordinary people engaged in different activities and scenes from the absorption center in Atlit. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce all of you to Tigist and she will present the works in her exhibition at the Tel Aviv Museum. Hi everyone, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Ronit. And uh, I will start uh, right away with the presentation. So as uh, Ronit said, uh, it's, uh, it's in the uh, Tel Aviv Museum of Art. And I have uh, the honor to do it, to have this uh, big uh, exhibition with uh, 37 pieces in it, all of them in black and white and in charcoal. 
Uh, I work with uh, oil, oil, uh, oil colors and uh, and watercolors and pastels in color, but my favorite uh, medium is the charcoal. Uh, it just helps me to bring out a lot of emotions and uh, express myself uh, much better and tell the story in a more uh, clear way. Uh, so this is uh, this is my mother, a portrait of my mother. The whole exhibition, all the works, in a way directly or or not, uh, leads to her because she's very important, uh, an important figure in my life. Uh, she passed away when I was uh, 16. So it's a, it's a place to go back to and uh, ask myself questions about my identity and uh, about life in general, about what am I supposed to do or be as a human being, as a good human being. So she's a good place to go back to and uh, restart myself or, uh, or recharge myself. Uh, so she's in the middle of the exhibition, uh, both uh, uh, in a conceptually and uh, physically. Uh, this artwork is very small, uh, but it's framed very nicely and it has its own wall. And it's in the middle of the exhibition. You can see it on the right. Uh, so there's my mother and other related uh, women in my family that I appreciate uh, very much. And I want the whole, uh, I want others to see them the way I see them. Uh, very noble, uh, beautiful, strong, and woman who knows what's really important in life. The relationships, um, the way you treat uh, the other person next to you, and the way you stay strong even though you go through difficult times. So my mother is a very good example of that. She went through a lot of uh, loss in her life. Uh, and uh, she, she kept her, her joy, her joy from life. And uh, she kept being strong for us and for the rest of the family. Uh, we are uh, 12 in the family, 12 uh, siblings. And one, nine of them are from my mother. So she was there going through with us uh, through a lot of things, but still uh, stayed uh, strong and positive and loving. Uh, so she's a good example of, uh, for me, uh, for uh, a way to, uh, to uh, manage myself in the world. Uh, it's not just her, it's, uh, it's also her mother, my grandmother. Uh, she, she's kind of the same uh, strong uh, figure in our life. And uh, you can see, you can see her portraits uh, here. That's my grandmother, she's my mother's uh, mother. She's also in the exhibition. And you can see in these ones, the, the big uh, portraits of, or, are of my, uh, my other relatives, uh, also women in my life that I admire very much. And I want the, the, the rest of the people to see them the way I want them to see them. Beautiful, powerful, and uh, very noble and uh, modest. Uh, these are also my mothers, but they are different because they are more expressive. Uh, I did them uh, quickly, unlike the other one that I worked on it on for weeks. And it went on very, it was very hard to get her essence in this one. Uh, I, I decided at some point that it wasn't going so well, so I, so I left it and I went back to it. And I did all this uh, erasing and redo, redrawing uh, for so long that it got its, uh, its uh, depth because of the erasing and, uh, and redrawing of it. But it's very realistic, even though it's very open and expressive, it's very realistic. But these ones are, it's the same one, but it's the, sa the same woman, but she looks different in each uh, drawing because I let myself uh, express myself, express my feelings and the things that I was uh, thinking about or feeling at the same moment that I was uh, drawing them. And this is my father visiting the exhibition uh, with uh, looking at the portraits of my mother. And this is, as I, as I said, my grandmother. 
and uh, she's very strong and she's a, a very important figure in our life. Uh, us, the women in the family, and also the men in the family. She was very creative, uh, very strong, very, uh, very uh, giving and loving. And uh, she was a she was a hero. She saved uh, people's lives, and uh, it was very important for me to put her in the museum, uh, where she and to get the respect that she deserves. The thing about my uh, grandmother, and mother, is uh, that because they weren't educated. Uh, people here tend to look at them uh, not a successful uh, woman because in the in the in the Western communities in the in the Western uh, societies uh, people look at people with with no education and uh, with no career or financial uh, uh, things uh, as if they are less successful or, or not as strong as they, as they, as they are. Uh, but for me, they are actually very successful because they knew what was important in life, the way they support the people around them. Uh, they had a lot of uh, richness in the way they knew how to approach people, uh, to help people and uh, to be strong even though you go through a lot of uh, difficulties. So that, that are the things that I, take from them and that are very important to me and was very important for me to show. So, so just to say in a way, uh, don't judge people uh, by a certain way of judging people. It, stay open-minded and see if, if there are things that you can learn from them uh, that are not obvious or not the way you, you, uh, you are used to judging people. So as I said, uh, she was very. Uh, we were. We are very inspired uh, by this a uh, great person, and uh, this is a poem that my brother uh, wrote about her, uh, our grandmother, and uh, I will ask Ronit uh, to read it for you. It's a long uh, poem, but it's only two two pieces of it. With pleasure, T. Geist. And I just think this is another example of just what an artsy family you have and just full of creativity in so many different ways. Um, so The Confession of a Potter by Yosef Enayu. But perplexed, she asks, is it really just a pot? That which is made to be, rhythmic to beat with time every minute durable to survive, lifeless but alive, revealing of time's event, broken or intact, capable of shading light on civilizations of the past, archeology's span delight and history's searching light, humanity's footprint, can it just be a pot all what she can think of was earth in water, air in fire, earth and water, air and fire, present in their presence and present in their absence through the proxy of her vessels. And then she inductively infers clay is just an illusion, not the essence of her creation be it in a tissue, a cell, or in molecules, atoms, or in earth continents. And in the universe, earth, the void is the medium, the form and the platform upon which and in which all events take form. Thank you, Onit. Uh, it's a very long poem, as I said, but I took uh, these two uh, ideas uh, from the poem that guide me when I work, and I really relate to it. Uh, one is uh, the way it describes uh, the people who have the sensitivity or the attraction to the meaning of uh, obvious things. 
uh, like the daily things, you can look at them as daily thing and ignore them, or you can uh, uh, look at them in a deeper way to see what they represent and to give it a lot of meanings uh, and to see uh, the beauty in it. In it. Uh, but you need to be very sensitive to it, uh, the way he describes uh, just the pot in a, in a very deep way. That's very uh, interesting as if that's what artists are supposed to do, to make people see things in life and in a daily things, a deeper meanings, a deeper things. So that's one thing. And another thing is the importance of the, vo of the void. Uh, the way I work, I give the same importance uh, to the positive uh, figure, like the, the figure, the, the, let's say the person, the object, but also the background, everything works. I work on everything in the same way uh, because the, vo the void and the, the absence is also important to define things. So that was uh, very interesting to me. And uh, it's, I, really, I really relate to it when I work. That's beautiful. Can I just come in with a quick question? Sure. Was, was that written in English originally or is that translated? Uh, he wrote it in Amharic and he translated it uh, to, he lives in, uh, in the States, he used to live in Canada, this uh, brother. Uh, he didn't come to Israel, he, he moved to Canada from Ethiopia. So uh, Amharic and English is, are, are his uh, languages. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Thank you. So uh, this is another brother that I uh, made a drawing of. His name is Elias, uh, he came to visit me uh, one day uh, at my background, uh, at my uh, garden. And he took these uh, leaves of them, it's called mellows. You have them everywhere. So he took the, the leaves and he sat down and I took the picture because I knew exactly what he's doing. He's going back in time to our childhood where, where he used to pick this, uh, these leaves and uh, play with them as, uh, as a ball, jumping them on our legs because we didn't have uh, toys then. So it was, uh, I thought it was very beautiful that he was sitting there going back in time, but still he was there with me, uh, but in another time. So I tried to capture that. Uh, and uh, in this uh, drawing, in a way that I worked in a very free way and uh, with, open, with open lines, just to give it the sense of, uh, of a drawing that deals with different kinds of times or, or uh, just to, to give it in a, a, a sense of memory or something that talks about a, an idea, not a physical thing. So this is an example of a drawing that I started and I left it uh, um, relatively at the beginning because I felt that, like that everything is, uh, is there. The things that I was trying to express was there and I didn't felt uh, like going into details and express or give more details uh, about him because it's everything was already there. And all this white uh, and that goes up, up from his uh, neck to his legs gives it a holy, a holy feeling. Like it's like we're talking about something not physical, it's something about uh, a, a metaphysical thing. And this is also another uh, portrait of a cousin of mine. It's actually belongs with the first one that we saw the way I want to show them uh, proud and beautiful. And this is my, uh, my cousin uh, Frey. And here I worked uh, at, the, at the face of it and the shirt of it is very, is very realistic. But when I went down where the light is, I felt, I felt that I can uh, let it be more free uh, and to talk more about the light that comes from the window. It was actually a bigger uh, drawing. So you can see, you could see the window, but I cut it. Uh, I cut the window out just to emphasize the light that comes from the window and falls on her hair and on, and on her knee. Uh, so that's uh, Frey. And this is uh, Frey next to her drawing, just to give you the sense of the size of it. It is the biggest uh, drawing in the exhibition. 
So this is also Frey and my uh, self-portrait and heroes that we saw uh, at the beginning in the photo. Uh, they are placed together in the exhibition. And uh, as I said, I just wanted to show them the way I see them uh, with a, with a di direct look and not apologetic, just uh, very uh, confident and, and uh, in a way that they say we deserve to be here and to be seen. Okay, these are uh, portraits of uh, uh, three young uh, Ethiopian men. Uh, two of them were killed uh, because of uh, police uh, brutality. And uh, this, this, the one in the center is Avera Mengistu. He's missing and uh, they say they are, he's captured by the Hamas, but it's already six years and uh, it's not, it's not, they're not doing enough to bring him back. And the way I try to make people feel that they are Israelis, they are sons of mothers and that we all should care and uh, do something about it uh, is uh, that I call them the sons of uh, Frenos uh, son, Agernes son, and Mamiya son. Uh, just trying to make the, the gap that the people are doing when it's, uh, uh, when it's uh, uh, talked about our, uh, our people. Uh, people look at us as the other and they don't really consider us sometimes as part of the society. So this is my, me trying to make it, to make us uh, be seen and uh, to make people feel that they are really boys of the women and that we all should care about them and do something to bring, to bring Avera back or to make justice uh, for the mothers of uh, Yosef Selamsa and the Yehuda Biadge. And now if you have the questions, you can ask or, or just write it down and uh, Ronnie can ask. Can I uh, start? Sure. I don't know if this is so much of a, um, a question, but um, one of the first drawings that you displayed was a picture of your mother and of your grandmother. Um, that go back to with your father looking at it and then your father looking at those. And there was a certain image that occurred to me. You described as you were drawing them, how you wanted them to be seen as you saw them, as strong, as confident, as successful, even though uh, society sometimes judges people, as you said, by material wealth and education. Um, but that's not necessarily the way, the true value of a person's success. And you saw them as so successful and powerful and strong. I thought it was such an amazing picture, this picture of what it must be like. I'm sure, I don't know if you ever said anything, but for your father to see how you saw your mother, his wife, and his mother. We you know as we can't always get into the heads, like I have no idea how my children view me or my wife or my parents, but you as an artist were able to express what they, what, the way you wanted them to be seen. And I'm so curious what that was like for your father to see that image of how you saw his wife and his mother. Um, it's just a, an amazing picture to capture that um, in that picture. Yes, it was, it was very, it was a big excitement when you entered the, uh, the, the room where the exhibition is, the rooms. Uh, but he's a very, uh, he's a quiet person. He doesn't show his excitement, but he kept quiet, uh, quiet. And even though he's very old and he hardly works, he went through and read all the captions and went, uh, saw all the 37 pieces. And uh, it was very, uh, everybody kept uh, taking pictures because it was a moment. It was uh, really, uh, definitely a moment that I will always uh, remember. He didn't say much, but you could see that he's, uh, is uh, observing everything and uh, uh, that, it, that he has his uh, thoughts, even though he kept them to himself, but he could see that he is uh, concentrating and is really, it was a moment.
Tiki, we have another wonderful question um, from two people in the audience, David and Rhonda. So they are particularly curious, the three portraits, the two of um, the Ethiopian Israeli boys that died from police brutality, and then the one that um, was kidnapped by Hamas. They're curious to know if there has been any positive response um, to your work, you know, since it's been on display. Have you already seen a response um, based on those images that you made? Do you think that it there's been any change or, I mean, I guess the question is, um, do you see any changes already taking shape since your exhibition? And do you feel that maybe, maybe, you know, people have seen it and really have done, actually taken action since seeing these works? Small part, uh, my part of uh, trying to aware, uh, uh, to uh, make people realize uh, what's going on with us. So it being in the museum, will, where, when it's open, a lot of people visit there and they ask questions about it. So more people are aware, but it's not only me, there are a lot of activity going on because uh, there were two uh, young men uh, killed in 19, in the 2018, like in half, uh, in six months, the difference. So that was, uh, everybody was like uh, shocked, uh, saying enough is enough and there was a lot of, uh, or, or, uh, we were more organized. So, so the second one that was killed, uh, Salomon uh, Teka, we organized and we donated money and the family is using it to sue the officer. So that's a big change. It's the first mm -hmm. time that an officer is being sued. And uh, the first time that we had all of a sudden uh, power, uh, because what happens most of the times is that the families don't have the money to do anything. Right. This is a, so this is a, a progress, uh, but it's thanks to a lot of activities that are going on. And I did my, my small part. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, that's great to hear. Um, also, I just want to clarify to the group that this is just a midway check-in point, but Tigis is going to continue with the rest of the works of the exhibition. Just we felt that sometimes people have questions and it no longer feels relevant at the end of the presentation. So if there's no more questions at this point, um, Tigis, it would be great if you can continue. Okay, the second part of the exhibition is the My Family in the Absorption Center. In, in 1984, we came to Israel, we made Aliyah, and uh, I was seven years old then. Uh, it was after the journey, the very hard uh, journey uh, from Ethiopia to Sudan that we did uh, on, by foot. And we had a lot of uh, dangerous uh, things that we if, that we faced uh, on the journey, and then we came to Israel. And this, this is a work that uh, I did based on a photo that was taken of us uh, right after we came to Israel. And uh, these are the family members who did the journey, uh, the very dangerous uh, journey uh, on the way. So this is an iconic uh, image of our family uh, after the journey and before the journey into the Israelism. Uh, before, right before I started uh, working really hard to being an Israeli. And uh, this photo also for me is a turning point because I saw my mother until this point in Ethiopia. She was everything for me. She knew everything and she was very strong. Uh, she knew it all. She was very prote protective. And then when we came to Israel at the, at the at the first years, all of a sudden, I started looking at her the way the society looks at her, as someone weak who doesn't know the language, uh, who doesn't know something that is, all kinds of things that are necessary to, to become an, an Israeli. And so I started it to become uh, as much as Israeli I can be in a short uh, time. 
uh, which meant uh, which meant moving away from her and from the culture that she represented. So that was a turning point for me, a sad point, turning point. And uh, now in my age, I know that it was very uh, a very subtle uh, but very painful uh, side of the racism. Uh, the way it made me look, uh, it, it made me see my mother in a way, in a negative way, uh, mm -hmm. and made that the relationship bet between us uh, a negative uh, uh, turn into a negative way. And uh, now I know it was, it wasn't uh, justified. And the way I'm trying to fix that is to put her uh, portrait in the museum and to see and to see my my nephews and my kids come to the museum and look at her in a nice frame and uh, with a beautiful portraits of her. So that was a closure for me and a way to fix uh, this, uh, this form that was done to her by me and by the society. Uh, here you can see the, how big the work is and how central. And uh, in the left, you can see uh, the president, uh, Ruvi Rivlin, uh, came to see, and uh, we gave him a special tour. And in the right, you can see my family members came to visit and were very excited to see the, to see us, to see uh, Saba, and uh, all the uncles in this old uh, uh, drawing, in this old photo. And, Uh, so what I did is that I took the, that big uh, photo and I divided it to two or three uh, figures, sometimes four. And then it was very interesting for me because the composition changed, so the challenge was different. And uh, in the other hand, the story was different. All of a sudden, uh, from a story about the whole family, the story was about uh, a one member and his relationship to the other member that is in the in the drawing with him. So it was interesting to me to divide it in, in different kinds of, in different pieces like that. Uh, these are two uh, good examples of uh, drawings uh, that I uh, didn't know where I'm going to end with it, but I started with uh, uh, big shapes and I stopped uh, re relatively at the beginning and I didn't give uh, too much uh, details because I felt like it's working the way it is. Uh, it's uh, in the right, you can see my father. Uh, it might be very abstract to people who don't know him, that people who know him uh, can rec recognize him by the way he sits down. And people who really know him, like me and the, the brothers, can even say when in a day of a week it is. It's uh, every Friday. He's a religious man. So every Friday afternoon, he takes a shower. He, he, he gets very clean and he sits down uh, in that corner of the sofa. And he sits down like a king waiting for the Shabbat, the queen to come in. So that's very uh, typical to him. And, and uh, I love the way that it's very open and it looks like a landscape. But in the other hand, uh, for people who know him very well, that's very much him and that's very too typical to him. And that, that's why I left it uh, very open. Uh, and the other one is uh, of me and my daughters. Uh, again, you can see that uh, you might not see that it's two girls, and, uh, but you can see it's a mother. You can see it's very, it's in a home. It's a very uh, intimate, intimate. And uh, very, there's a sense of togetherness, as if we are uh, like a one piece, like a sculpture from one piece. So I left it. I liked I liked it this way, and I left it uh, uh, this way, and I didn't go on and gave uh, give more details about it. Uh, these are also two uh, two other mothers with uh, ch with children. And they also, uh, the same thing happened that I felt like the togetherness is working. The image of the protecting mother is, is there. So I didn't feel like going on and give uh, the specific details of the specific uh, figures. 
Uh, so it's a, it's a theme that I love very much, uh, mothers and children. It moves me a lot and I take a lot of pictures of my friends and my relatives uh, holding their children, protecting their children. That's very, that's very moving to me. I'm a mother myself. And uh, also, I think it's uh, the thoughts of my mother and her softness and, uh, and the absence of her that makes me, I think, uh, moved uh, by these uh, 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 gestures. Okay, these are drawings that I made uh, from photos that I took in Ethiopia. I went back uh, to Ethiopia after 20 years that I was here in Israel, uh, becoming uh, as much as Israeli as I can. And I thought that I was succeeding at that. And then I went back to Ethiopia and then I saw women that do all kinds of things the way I do them. Sitting down like the people in the market uh, on, the, on the left and uh, bending down to pick up things like the woman who is cooking in the right. And I was uh, very, I was surprised but also very happy about it to find out that in a way something within me stayed there just like those women and just like my mother. So that, so that was a good, uh, a good uh, discovery for me to find out that even though I try to get as far as I can from my mother and her culture, something was embedded in me in a way that I couldn't erase it. I wasn't aware of it. I couldn't uh, erase it. So what I did is uh, I went uh, and, and took a photos of myself uh, doing all kinds of uh, domestic uh, works the way my mother used to do them. Uh, she used to work very slowly to do things uh, in a very, uh, uh, she was very, she was doing uh, things very slowly in a very, uh, how do you say, not, not quickly, but she, she used to do everything very well uh, with uh, a lot of patience. Uh, so I took these uh, photos and I, did, and I did a drawing of all the things that I do, uh, the way my mother does. Like uh, on the right, you can see me chopping uh, very, in very small, uh, to a very small uh, pieces uh, like my mother used to do. And this one is, a, is another woman that I met, Ethiopian woman that I met uh, here in Israel. Uh, her name is Zavish. Uh, she works in a community garden. Uh, she's growing uh, potatoes. So I went there hoping to see them in, a, in those uh, gestures. And I really did. And I took the photos and I, and I made this uh, drawing. Uh, and that's it. It's, and it's also the, the same way that I bend down and the same way the woman I saw in Ethiopia uh, do it and the same way my mother used to do things. So that was very moving to me and I did uh, this very soft uh, drawing about it. And this is my studio. It's a shelter. It's a public shelter that I'm renting. And this is where I work. And this is where I worked on the whole uh, um, exhibition, all, all the works in the exhibition in the Tel Aviv Museum. And that's it. If you have uh, more questions, then I'm here to answer. Tiki, thank you so much. Every time you present, I get goosebumps. Um, just the way you speak about your mother and just how much it meant to you seeing her image um, in on the walls of the Tel Aviv Museum. It's just very, very emotional. And I also love that image of your father waiting for Shabbat. I just think it's just so powerful. And it just, I feel like also it just reminds us of sometimes the importance of religion and how it really helps give us structure, you know, in our lives. Um, and also just the way you speak about inheriting gestures and especially seeing those women when you're back in Ethiopia, I feel like we're always so hung up on like, oh, did I get 
her hands, her eye color, her this, and to be able to inherit those things is just really incredible. There's something, something that I'm sure no one really thinks about. So you really, I think these works really help us see the world very, very differently. And especially just, I feel like these works, it's not about race, it's about what it means to be human. And especially now during the um, pandemic, I, I think it's just a huge reminder that at the end of the day, it really comes down to who we are as people and about being good to our family, to our friends, to our communities. So I, I just, it just always makes me think so much. Um, you know, and another really interesting thing, you know, your artwork and even a lot of artists, a lot of African American artists, I think the number one message that I receive is you shouldn't, and this goes for everyone, you should never um, let anyone make you feel that you're, you know, a certain way. Like, even if someone else sees you a certain way, you don't need to be that person that they decide that you are. And I think everyone can benefit, no matter who they are, you know, um, in life, you know. I was just having, yeah, we're even, you know, now I'm having this conversation with my older son who's applying to college. And sometimes, you know, a college advisor will be like, oh, just apply to this school, you'll get in, it'll be easy. But don't limit yourself. Don't see yourself the way they see you. If you want to try harder, then you need to try harder. You know, so I feel like there's just so many powerful messages. Um, but let me see, there might be some questions from the audience. Um, oh, someone's asking me to ask a question on their behalf. Um, hold on. Um, Yes, so someone is mentioning um, that they've, I think they've, they're familiar with some works by other Ethiopian artists and that they find it's very interesting how usually the works are filled with color, um, very colorful imagery, um, sometimes biblical scenes. Um, and this is very, very different than yours. And um, let's see, do either represent traditional Ethiopian themes or are you choosing to eliminate color for a specific reason? So, so I guess the issue is, do you feel that um, your works ever borrow from these traditional Ethiopian themes or do you deliberately um, stay away from that? And if the person that asked the question, if I'm not representing your question correctly, then please let us know. Uh, yes, uh, there are uh, the traditional Ethiopian uh, uh, crafts and the uh, artworks, especially the ones that you see in the, um, in the, not synagogues, in the churches, they're very uh, colorful. Mm -hmm. And the, all the crafts are very colorful. Uh, and uh, I had a thought that if my mother saw the exhibition, she might have uh, wanted to see it in color because her crafts were very colorful. I'm not sure she would, uh, she would have agreed to this uh, black and white images. She, she wouldn't understand it. Uh, but uh, this is the way I see beauty in the black and white. And I see... Uh, and I see uh, a more freedom in the interpretation when it's black and white, because if I draw an apple, you decide if it's green or red. So there's a lot of uh, freedom in the interpretation and I like that. And the other thing is that it's, uh, it's simple. So it lets me, it helps me to, dip in, to dig in. When I work with color, I need to think about all the comb combinations, uh, darks, uh, against the uh, against uh, a light and also every color got its own uh, uh, tints so it's a lot of things to think about 
And the way I love the I love the charcoal because I don't have to think much. I can really uh, base my uh, I have the drawing uh, background, and I have all the emotions. So when I come to work in black and white, it just comes out very quickly and naturally, and it's much more uh, intuitive and real. That's why I love it, the black and white. Uh, but uh, you're right, the, the, the traditional Ethiopian uh, artworks are colorful. And even in Israel, there's uh, Mirita Kele. She's very famous and uh, she's great. And she's full of color, a lot of color, big words with a lot of uh, color, but that's uh, what she likes. And uh, I'm different. I have uh, the other things that I love. And I have a sister, uh, she's an artist. She's also very, she works with a lot of color. So she takes the same themes like my mother and she does it very, uh, in a, in, with a lot of color. Thank you. <laughs> As we wait for more questions, I was hoping, um, I forgot the Hebrew word and maybe some people in this audience are familiar with it. Um, the work with your brother playing with the mallows. What was that, the Hebrew word for it again? Ah, chobezot. Right, chobezot, okay. <laughs> in one uh, hand, very Israeli, you can see them everywhere, but also for the Arabs, it's very common. So there's something very Arabic and uh, Israeli about it, but for me, it's very Ethiopian. It's very from my childhood. That's great. Um, the other thing um, I was hoping maybe you can touch on, sometimes the gaze of your figures are very, very striking. And what is the message in their gaze? Is it about them looking right back at us? Um, is it like, what is the idea behind their, their, their expression and their look on their faces? Uh, yes, um, they are the ones that look uh, directly to us. It's part of a, a previous exhibition that I had. Uh, it's called, it was called uh, In Her Place. Mm -hmm. It was uh, five portraits of uh, five women, uh, Ethiopian women in a small uh, space. And the idea was uh, that you go into it, uh, like let's say an Israeli man, and you have these five uh, dark-skinned woman looking at you uh, directly and they are very big and uh, look at you straight. So the idea was to flip the gaze and to make the, the man or the woman uh, to feel like a, a minority, uh, to make them feel uh, how it feels uh, to be looked uh, like that, to be the minority in, in that environment of a specific gaze. Uh, so that was an idea uh, around it. And uh, in the museum now, it's part of uh, all the, all the uh, uh, portraits uh, of a woman that I wanted to show as uh, proud and not apologetic. And uh, they are claiming their place, mm -hmm. saying that uh, we are here, part of this society, part of this place, and we are here and we deserve to be here like the rest of, uh, of the people. Right. I, love I feel empowered hearing you say that. Um, I just want to remind everyone, we really love your questions. Um, and so if anyone has a question for TDs, please feel free to unmute yourself and you can ask her directly. Um, but if you're shy, that's fine. And you can always just um, um, type your question in the chat box. So we'll just give it another second. Okay, I think uh, <laughs> I I think that's it with the questions. Everyone's you left everyone speechless. They're just so moved by your work. <laughs> um, okay, um, so. 
the other thing that I will say, um, I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put for everyone, in case anyone has any specific questions about your work, I would be happy to be, um, you know, to help out with that. So I will put my email in the chat. Okay. Um, and also, I just want to say that, you know, Tigist's exhibition is still um, up. <laughs> it, there, it has been extended, which is exciting. Um, it's going to be up through Pesach and beyond. So who knows, maybe if things really change, we can all go to Israel for Pesach and see the works in person. But the way things are going to Gis, it keeps on getting extended. So you never know. <laughs> we might actually all be able to um, see this in, uh, in person. Um, and um, anyway, thank you all so much for being here. A huge thank you to Tigist. Um, Rabbi Freundlich, he had another engagement, but he thanks you tremendously um, for being here for your presentation. It was just incredibly impactful. Um, and then I also just want to um, remind everyone that um, I'll be back February 23rd at 8 p.m. and I'm giving a lecture to all of you on Mark Chagall. So you're all gonna be art experts at the end of the pandemic, <laughs> modernists and contemporary artists alike, and just wishing everyone good health, stay safe, be well, and thank you so much for participating today and again, a huge, huge thank you to Tigis for sharing her incredible story and these beautiful works from your exhibition. We, we all so appreciate it. Thank you, Ornit, for organizing it. And thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Stay safe. <laughs>